This is Pocket Watching with JT, the call in financial talk show focused on helping you get your money right. Jason Thornton is a certified financial planner licensed in both tax and investments. Now, this is not personal financial advice. This is JT's real reaction to all your money and business questions. Are you deep in debt, living paycheck to paycheck, and looking for a way out? Call Pocket Watching with JT, the financial advisor for the people. Need more? Book your personal consultation with my man JT at pocketwatcher.net. Now, let's go pocket watching. Hey, Pocket Watchers, welcome to Pocket Watching with JT. I am certified financial planner, Jason Thorne. That means I'm an actual financial advisor. I do not just play one on the internet. In my real life, in my firm, I specialize in tax and wealth planning for my clients. But on YouTube, once a week, I react to your money questions and scammer news. Want to give a big shout out to the over 115, 16,000 of you who have already hit that subscribe button. I appreciate that. As you make your way into the live stream, do me a favor, hit that like button, share. And if you have not subscribed already, sit back, relax. Maybe you'll subscribe later. So let's get straight into it. What are we talking about tonight? Well, tonight we have to have a conversation about this man right here. Now, if you are unaware who this is, let me uh let me tell you right now. That is not someone's grandmother. I understand with the hat, the glasses, the chain around the glasses, I can understand that you may confuse this individual with someone's grandmother, but it is not. This is a man that goes by the name Bitcoin Rodney. Now, Bitcoin Rodney has been all around social media. He's been around a lot of famous people. He's been on some major podcasts and radio shows. But tonight we have to talk about this man because of this. Bitcoin Rodney was arrested. Oh, my God. How does that happen? So Bitcoin Rodney was arrested and he's been put up on charges of defrauding people out of over $7 million, over $7 million. Now, some of you may ask the question, how, why, why would a man with a name like Bitcoin Rodney, how could he ever find himself behind bars? Good question. Very good question. Well, Bitcoin Rodney was a part of what many people are calling a Ponzi scheme. I know, I know, I know. A Ponzi scheme in the cryptocurrency space, that's like so unheard of. How could that How could that be? I know, I know, you're shocked. But yes, Bitcoin Rodney apparently was a part of a crypto Ponzi scheme. Now, would you like to hear the pitch of how you could make money in this crypto Ponzi scheme? Let's check that out. I'm excited to talk to you today about HyperFund's bonus rewards structure. Did you know that besides just earning daily rewards with your HyperDrive membership, if you help get others on board with HyperFund, you can earn even more in rewards. I'm talking about up to 1%, 3%, 6%, 9%, 12%, even 15% rewards earned daily and other bonuses as well. By now you have purchased or are getting ready to purchase your HyperFund membership and start earning those awesome daily rewards. And you're excited, so excited that you want to tell other people about it. Telling others about HyperFund and helping them to also purchase a HyperFund membership makes you a HyperFund community builder. And it also puts your daily rewards into HyperDrive. Now, I want to mention something important about HyperDrive rewards. While your daily passive rewards are paid to you with no restrictions and can be withdrawn anytime, something a little different happens with your earned HyperDrive rewards. 80% of your HyperDrive rewards that you earn each day will go to your daily rewards, but 20% will go into your certified funds balance. First up, the community reward. With the community reward, you get a percentage of your team's daily rewards. Those rewards can range from 1% 
to 20% and go up to 20 levels deep. Take a look here. Everyone that you directly referred and used your Hyperfund invitation code to purchase a membership package falls under level one for you, and you earn an extra 20% of what they earn on their daily passive rewards. Don't worry. They still get their earned daily rewards in full. Remember, you're just getting this bonus for telling them about Hyperfund. All right, so that sound very simple, didn't it? Uh, seemed like some kind of pyramid scheme in the way that you get paid in this organization. Well, apparently this organization crumbled about a year or so ago. So why is Bitcoin Rodney all of a sudden getting arrested? Well, Bitcoin Rodney was one of the biggest promoters of this investing opportunity in the U.S. One of the biggest promoters. Now, I want to give a big shout out to the journalists over there at um, The Guardian. Thank you, guys. They did a lot of hard work on this. And they actually sent the pocket watcher the court documents. So for a minute, for a very brief moment, the court documents were open to the public. But then very quickly, the government came in and they sealed the documents. But in that short moment, the reporters with The Guardian were able to get the documents. Well. Being the pocket watcher that I am, I reached out to the Guardian and they sent me the documents. So the sealed documents I have, and I will be sharing some of that with you guys tonight. But I just want you guys to take a look at this. Why, why are we talking about this? The reason why this is relevant is because Bitcoin Rodney was hopping around and going to some of your favorite podcasts. He was with and on The Breakfast Club, he was also on and with million dollars worth of gain. And the issue that I have is the fact that I personally believe that these platforms have some level of responsibility to their audiences. Now, remember, these podcasts are hip hop podcasts. These podcasts are hosted by DJs former rappers, their expertise is hip hop. But somehow, some way they keep bringing on financial experts and we wonder why they don't ask the right questions. We wonder why they're in a position where they're letting potential grifters have potential victims, which are their followers. So uh, I did a 60 second clip of this man being on the uh, Breakfast Club a couple of days ago. Somehow, all of a sudden, iHeartRadio, whatever they're called now, removed the interview. Because I'm pretty sure Charlemagne the God and DJ Envy, they don't have control of the YouTube channel. It's the big wigs up top that actually have control of that YouTube channel. That's what I figured. But Within a few, I want to say a few hours or so after me posting my short, now you can't find the video. But lucky for you guys, I still have a few clips. So let's let's take a look at Bitcoin Rodney on The Breakfast Club. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Yo. Bitcoin Rodney. Yo, 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 what's up? What's up, Bitcoin Rodney? You the man. Listen, I'm glad you're here because we have so many questions about cryptocurrency, and I know Bitcoin is something that you got on uh, fairly early. So explain who Bitcoin Rodney is. Bitcoin Rodney is the actually average Joe out here trying to make the above average decisions to help a lot of individuals um, close the wealth gap. You know, a um, lot, lot of times we as people get to the game too late. And since I've done pretty well in the industry, I want to bring everyone together and show them how to do the exact same thing I did or even better. What does that even mean? Now, I consider myself a pretty smart guy. Some would say even arrogantly so. But as smart as I think I am, I have no idea what that man was talking about. What was he saying? That was just a bunch of word salad. He was just throwing a bunch of buzzwords together and trying to form 
some sort of concept of who he is. But that is in no way, shape, or form anything that a person can use to say, I know exactly who this guy is, and I know what he does. He was just throwing out words. So as you can see here, and I want to bring this back up, all of a sudden, now, the video is gone. It is no longer on the internet. They have made the video private. Okay. All right. To me, it seems a little fishy. Uh, all of a sudden, you start taking videos down that you don't want the public to see. It's almost as if you're guilty of something, Breakfast Club. It looks as if you knew something was wrong, so you took it down. I mean, a lot of people do it. Earn Your Leisure does it all the time. I do a video about someone who was on Earn Your Leisure. All of a sudden, the video is magically gone. So, you know, I guess you guys stick together. But back to our main point. What, what's going on here? What are my notes? Because I want you guys to remember, that man, Bitcoin Rodney, he got away. He got away with a whole lot of money. A whole lot of money. According to the United States government, and shouts out to the Guardian uh, newspaper off in Australia, I believe, they gave me the documents here. According to the U.S. government, Bitcoin Rodney got away with almost $8 million. He's talking about $7,851,711. Ridiculous. Look at this man. Look at this man. This is not a man who you send money to. This is not a man that you invest with. And let me explain why you do not do that with this man. I, I, I just got to show you some of the red flags here. Now, surprise, surprise, Bitcoin Ronnie is a convicted felon. Why are they always convicted felons? Why? This man is a convicted felon. According to reports, this man did five years in prison for what? Drug trafficking. Drug trafficking. He comes out of jail. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I'm laughing, but I know a lot of people lost the life savings. I, I, I get it. I need to be more serious. But I want you to understand my frustration. Why are you giving convicted felons your life savings? These are individuals who do not even qualify to be a bank teller. No shout out to bank tellers, but I'm just trying to let you know, being a bank teller is the lowest level of the financial services industry. You do not need any type of special training. You do not need any type of special license or certification to be a bank teller. One of the very, very few requirements to become a bank teller is to not be a convicted criminal. <laughs> That's, that's pretty much how you can get by. If you're not a convicted criminal, you got a good shot at becoming a bank teller. Bitcoin Rodney could not be a bank teller. No way. This man was in jail for five years or prison. I apologize. I'm not a street dude. I always get the two mixed up. Let me say it correctly. Prison. He was in prison for five years for drug trafficking. Okay, so so red flag number one, red flag number one. And this was openly known. It's not like, oh, JT, you dug into the dark side of the internet and you had to pull. Just Google his name. That's all you have to do. You Google his name. Before you send a man tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars, Google their name. And if it happens to say that this person is a convicted felon, keep your money in your pocket or your bank account or wherever it was before you decided this Bitcoin Rodney guy, I like him. He's going to triple my money. All right. So that's red flag. Number one, the convicted, convicted felon. That's always a red flag. No go. Don't send them your money. But all right, what's next? Fake doctorate degree. If you have been a fan of pocket watching with JT for any amount of time, you should be well aware by now 
I am not a fan of fake college degrees. Don't like them. Don't like them at all. I even had on my show not too long ago a, a guy who owns a school that gives away fake college degrees. But here, here he is. He's extremely proud in this post that he had on Facebook. Extremely proud. But I want you to pay attention to the title that he now has the authority to claim based on his doctor degree. Check this out. He is now, from this day forward, based on the post, from this day forward, he is now to be known as His Excellency Dr. Rodney Burton, Commander of the Most Excellent Order of international experts. What the hell is that? What? what, Hold on. Let me me say. His Excellency, Dr. Rodney Burton, commander of the most excellent order of international experts. Why do I even have to do this? Why is this even? All right. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. So I looked into this and I said, I've never heard of that ever, never, ever, 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 ever have I heard of such a title. So I had to dig a little deeper, dig a little deeper, zoom in, use all of my editing skills to get a better picture of who gave him this title. And apparently he went to C-I-C-A, International University and Seminary. Once again, never heard of this institution before a day in my life. But, you know, I'm well aware that there are certain people who give out doctorate degrees like candy on Halloween. Like this gentleman here, Dr. Yuri Abraham. He was on the show. I had him here. I interviewed him. I asked him very good questions about his qualifications to have a doctorate degree himself and to then provide doctorate degrees to others. And a side note, he is a Nigerian immigrant. No shot at you uh, Nigerians, but I think it's relevant. He is a Nigerian immigrant. And Based on the information he provided, he has no educational experience to be qualified as a doctor. And the training that he provides to his students gives them no educational experience for them to then be called doctors. But some of your favorite online internet finance influencers now proudly put doctor before their name. Let's take a look at some of the very famous doctors in the black finance influencer space. Let's, who, who, who do we have here? We have, oh, I forgot. Dr. Brother Ben X. Yes, Dr. Brother Ben X, who himself was involved in a crypto Ponzi scheme. I warned him that it was a crypto Ponzi scheme. I told him that the government was going to shut it down and the government shut it down. I'm still waiting on a video because he said that he was going to document his process, document his experience. He was going to document the good stuff. He was going to document the bad stuff. But ever since the U.S. government shut down the Ponzi scheme, Brother Ben X has not made any videos about his passive income opportunity. He told you and he told me well, if something happens to the company, I'll I'll document it like I documented everything else. Well, Brother Ben X, we're waiting. Where's the video about how the company was shut down? But yeah, Brother Ben X, he is also a doctor, and he got his doctor degree from one of these fake religious-based, no, <laughs> no work, all life experience type of doctor degrees. Who else do we have? We also have, oh, yes, 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 yes. The trucking guru, Dr. Kiara Henderson. We can't forget about her. She is a pocket watcher 
favorite. But she too, she has a doctorate degree from an institution that really shouldn't be given doctorate degrees. All right. Uh, who else do we have here? Oh, yes, we have a uh, doctor, Dr. David Emote, a very famous multi-level marketing promoter. Uh, he was selling you guys coffee one day. Next day, he's selling you guys uh, Forex trading. I'm not sure what he's up to now, but he hops from company, from company to company. Now he's a doctor. All right. Who else do we have? And we have, oh, yes. Dr. Myron Golden. For those of you who are unaware, Dr. Myron Golden, he is the guru of gurus. Some of your favorite gurus are students of his. Here's a few names. Uh, Him 500. Him 500, student of this fella right here. Uh, Dave Shans from Social Proof, student of this guy right here. Uh, I believe... Wall Street Trapper, student of this guy right here. We also have also Dr. Kenan Williams. He is also a doctor in what I have no idea. No idea, but proudly puts the DR in front of his name. All right, let's keep this going. So uh, I decided to take a look and see if this school is actually accredited. Can the school actually give out real degrees that would be honored by the U.S. educational system? It's not very hard. All you guys have to do is uh, go to the U.S. Department of Education website. They have a database of all the schools that are accredited. Just plug the name in and what pops up? No results. So most likely, this school is simply a diploma mill. You give them money, they give you a piece of paper, and now you are a doctor. You're a doctor. Red flag. When you see people, I mean, I'm trying not to be petty, but listen. When you see people who are now rebranding themselves as financial experts online, but you know in your heart of hearts, this person seems like someone who had a lot of trouble graduating grade school, right? You can, you can tell they had a lot of trouble graduating grade school. But now, not only are they a famous online finance influencer, they're also a doctor. That's not the type of person you give your life savings to. You keep your money in your pocket. What else do we have? Here? All right, here we go. An MLM passed. Please pay attention to this. If you have a person who has a long history of being involved in several multi-level marketing companies, you keep your money in your pocket. Please, please keep your money in your pocket. Because when you have guys like Bitcoin uh, Rodney, he has a long MLM past. Here we go. In 2015, he was associated with U Fun Club. Uh, apparently, the Thai uh, police estimated that the U Fun Club Ponzi scheme loses has losses of 1.17 billion dollars. That's billion with a B. Billion with a B. And here's your guy. Now, once again, this is easy to find information. He still has all of his pictures and information of being associated with this company on his Facebook page, on his Instagram. So before you give him the bank wire of tens of thousands of dollars, just check and see if he's ever been a part of a Ponzi scheme before. That's all it takes. You don't, you don't have to go to school and no, no, no. Just Google. Has he ever been a part of a Ponzi scheme before? So this is 2015. 2015, you fun club. Yeah, $1.17 billion Ponzi scheme. What else do we have here? We have DS Domination. Same thing, 2015, another MLM uh, opportunity that obviously wasn't very good. 
Uh, we have 2017. Here we go. 2017, as early as 2017, he was associated with a crypto opportunity. And this crypto opportunity was USI Tech. USI Tech was a big scam, according to many reports. Money went in, fake coins came out, and the investors lost virtually everything. Google or DuckDuckGo or whatever, you Bing, whatever you want to do. Just check and see if this person has a past of being associated with other Ponzi schemes before you fall for the new Ponzi scheme that they're in. All right, all right, here we go. Here's one of my last points. This is my last point. After this, I'm going to bring up callers. So here we go. The link is in the chat if you guys want to call in. This is my last point. Fake social proof. What is fake social proof? Fake social proof is when someone uses social media in an attempt to create some kind of credibility that they really don't have, right? Let me give you guys some examples. Here we go. You can go to this guy's social media and what will you see? You will see him with celebrities. Oh my God. Celebrities. We got DJ Khaled in the business. Now, DJ Khaled himself has been wrapped up in crypto scams. So once again, I don't know how much this picture helped him, you know, get victims, but DJ Khaled himself was involved in crypto scams. But okay, you got him with DJ Khaled. Who else do we have? We have him with Busta Rhymes. All right, Busta Rhymes, Busta Bus. Uh, we have him with Jamie Foxx. All right, okay, Jamie Foxx in the building. We have him with Nick Cannon. Okay, him with Nick Cannon. See, the issue with uh, these selfies with uh, celebrities is that ultimately they mean nothing. They mean absolutely nothing. I mean, look, look at this. Who, who else do we have here? We have Floyd Mayweather. Oh, great. Floyd Mayweather. I'm going to take financial advice. From Floyd Mayweather. I will take boxing advice from Floyd Mayweather. I'm not taking reading advice from Floyd Mayweather. And I'm not going to take any financial advice from Floyd Mayweather. He too has been wrapped up in other crypto scams. He was actually wrapped up in the same crypto scam that DJ Khaled was in. But okay. All right. I got it. Now, once again, when it comes to these characters, I, I I don't get, I don't blame too much on these celebrities. And, and, and here's why. I don't know the, uh, the setup to those pictures. Those could be pictures based on, hey, he was at a club when I was there, or he paid me to come and perform at an event. I took a picture with him. I had no idea what was going on. And as a celebrity, I guess, I mean, they're in a position where they don't, they don't want to be rude, I guess, and not take the picture. So it is what it is. At this point, I'm warning you guys. If you see a guy with a bunch of selfies with celebrities, just know that means absolutely nothing. The fact that they have pictures of themselves with celebrities means nothing. It does not mean that now, oh, he must be a good guy. It does not mean, oh, he must know his stuff about finance. It does not mean, oh, he's trustworthy to give tens of thousands of dollars. It only means that they happen to be in the same place of a celebrity, and that celebrity did not say, no, I'm not going to take a picture. That's all that means. So just, just remember that. Keep that in your mind. But I do blame these guys. These guys I do have an issue with right here. So here we go. Million dollars worth a game. Apparently, he was a guest on million dollars worth a game. Now, this is different. Someone walks up to you and they want to take a picture. You want to be nice, you take the picture. But when you bring them on your platform, you have every opportunity to vet them. You have every opportunity to see 
who the hell this person is and who am I presenting before my audience? I guess they didn't do that because all of the stuff that I told you guys before in the other parts of my notes, they could have easily found out that he was a felon, that he spent five years in prison for drug trafficking. They could have easily found out that he was a part of many failed Ponzi scheme like multi-level marketing companies. Did they? Apparently not. Because when they come on shows like this, I believe it's under the banner of podcast payola. Podcast payola is when the guest pays the host to get on the show. And there's no disclosure that, hey, this is a sponsorship. Hey, they're giving me money. The only reason why they're on the show is because I got money. Because if the audience is aware of this, they look at the situation differently. If the audience knows, oh, this guy paid to be on the show, then the relationship between the audience, the host, and the guest is different. That's why there has to be disclosures that this is an ad or a sponsorship. When you hide the disclosure, that's what the FTC refers to as payola, which is a bad thing that they should not do. Uh, they had, if any of you go through that list, Million Dollars Worth of Game has had a bunch of, of financial experts on their show. You, you guys can check it. I've done you know many episodes and covered it, but you can go through that list of their business sponsorship uh, section of their show. And you'll see these guys, once again, they don't even qualify to be bank tellers, but they're sitting in front of a, a, a camera with uh, Gilly on one side and Wallow on the other as financial experts. They wouldn't even be bank tellers in the real finance world. All right. And lastly, let's talk about this crew because this is what we're here for. The Breakfast Club. The Breakfast Club. Listen, the Breakfast Club, they are the OGs at what I believe podcast payola is. Because honestly, how do some of these clowns get on the Breakfast Club? If you are not a rapper or a famous actor, why are you on the Breakfast Club telling us about how to repair our credit? Why are you on the Breakfast Club talking about real estate? Why are you on The Breakfast Club talking about crypto? We don't know you. You have done nothing within the industry that would make it worthy for you to be on a platform this big. These people are lending their credibility, and I believe they're lending their credibility for a fee. They have to be getting paid in my mind. They have to get money to bring these people on because they add absolutely no value to their show. They might as well just play another song, spend the next five to 10 minutes playing two or three songs rather than us having to listen to a person with an elementary school level vocabulary talk about finance. But all right, all right. He's not the only person that they had on. Of course, they had on Caesar Pena. He is right now fighting a case. I believe he's trying to work out a plea deal, but he's fighting a case with the feds for fraud. Who else did they have? Oh, yeah. Forgot about this guy, didn't you? Brother Polite, aka Michael Noak, who is right now behind bars. Right now, he's behind bars. And he used interviews like this, platforms like this, to elevate himself in the minds of his potential victims. So to me, they furthered the heinous crimes that he committed because they gave him a platform. And it's easy to find out who the hell this guy was long before he came on The Breakfast Club. And last but not least, the OG of Fake It Till You Make It, the OG of the Black Finance, three-time felon, High school dropout. Now I'm in real estate doing it real big. He's the OG, Jay Morrison. Of course, he was on The Breakfast Club. <sighs> At some point, guys, I mean, you, you got to laugh to keep from crying. Because 
there has to be some level of responsibility when it comes to having a podcast, trying to monetize your podcast. You, you got to have some kind of integrity and say, listen, if I'm going to bring someone on who is going to give financial gems to my audience, I should vet them. I should see if they're a felon. I should see if they have a long history of being a part of scams. I should see if they're calling themselves a doctor and they never went to school. These are things that any responsible adult would do, but apparently platforms like Earn Your Leisure, platforms like Million Dollars Worth of Game and The Breakfast Club, they don't care. It's not a big deal. When they get found out, oh, that guy was a scammer. You know what we'll do? We'll just take the video down. Take the video down. All done. Job's done. Now, quick update when it comes to your uh, guy, uh, Bitcoin Rodney. Bitcoin Rodney, right now, sitting behind bars. I believe he has a public defender. You know, maybe the government seized his assets and now he does not have the money to actually pay for an attorney. He has a public defender. This guy was flossing all in our faces. Lambo here, Lambo there. Big time in the, in the yachts. He's doing all of this stuff. The man is behind bars right now with a public defender in a case where it says the United States of America versus Bitcoin Rodney. That's where we're at. All right. But hey, listen, guys, maybe I got something wrong. Maybe I'm missing something. So right now you have an opportunity to call into the show and let me know what you think about Bitcoin Rodney about podcast payola, about the responsibility of these platforms when it comes to bringing on financial experts. So there is a link in the chat. You hit that link in the chat, you come on up and I'll bring you on the show. We got a few people in the back right now. So I am going to bring you guys up. We got Nick. Let me bring Nick up to the show. So here we go. Nick, you're live on the air with Pocket Watching with JT. What's going on? What's going on, JT? Listen, Bitcoin Ronnie got away with almost eight million dollars. Uh, but, but hey, it wasn't Bitcoin Rodney by himself, you know that. And truth and all fact, you know, the mm -hmm. hyperverse hyper fund was actually banned in most countries, and the only way they got it in is going to Australia. Mm -hmm. Before it came over here, you know, with his partners, okay, Lee and Shu. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I just say that that much. But my main thing, I know you a petty, petty, petty individual. And I, I didn't believe it at very, first. But, very much so. But after your last live, when you did mm -hmm. the Brother Mass, man, oh, man. That, <laughs> why you still Mansa like that? Listen. <laughs> Mansa, Mansa, whose real name is Christopher, uh, Christopher Deshaun Barber. Mansa was very confident in his financial knowledge. Mansa believed that he would be able to come on Pocket Watching with JT and convince me and my audience that his financial resources of being able to tap in to your secret government trust account and pay <laughs> all your bills, he thought that that was going to work here. And the problem is this. People like Mansa, a.k.a. Chris uh, Deshaun Barber, he speaks to an audience that does not challenge him. Like if you go to his YouTube mm. channel or you go to his Instagram, he speaks for a long time. He speaks for like hours and it's just him speaking and talking. He really believed that. And he, yeah, I think he tricked himself into believing it up to this point. He does not allow his students really to pay him it with the Because they account. can see it. Right. A, a he lot only of them really allows his that. students to pay him in cash. So to me, I feel like he kind of knows it's a grift, but at the same time, he has to live in the grift, and it, and it gets a little confusing. But, Nick, I appreciate you coming up. Thank you so much. I got to go to the next caller. We got, listen, I don't know what. This is KK's Day. KK's Days, I think it is. You're live on the air with Pocket Watching with JT. What's going on? Hi. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Go right ahead. All right. So I just think people are like weak-minded 
And to an extent, it's sad, but do I blame the one person for being a grimy person or do I blame the herds of, uh, let me use a nice word, um, of people that don't do their due diligence? Mm. Um, like, I, one thing I can say that I'm grateful for in my life is that I didn't fit in in middle school and high school. And I realized it helped. I was, you know, of course, nobody want to be the eyeball out, but it helped me for adulthood. And then the same people who want to fit in so much that they, you know, just used to do the most. There, you try to fit in so much, you bypass the time where you were supposed to be studying, growing, and developing yourself, which is the early, your early to mid twenties. They bypass that part of their life, partying, smoking, drinking. Like if if you even read these textbooks or you listen to the audio for these textbooks or, or whatever you're trying to do, mm-hmm. it's going to you know read the heart ventricles that are the is never that hip hop stuff in the background. Is never that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why do you need that? You have to really sit back and question your own self. Why do you need that? Why can't you sit still for a little bit? It's trauma. I don't know. Listen, I, they need to do better. This is embarrassing. <laughs> do better. If y'all giving your money away, y'all can send it to my cash app if that's what we're doing. <laughs> and I'm not going to scam you. I'm telling you, I'm keeping it. I'm just taking so. your money. Yeah, just let you know. We're just throwing money, money, money away. away. <laughs> right, look, so. There's a lot of what you said that I agree with, but here's the issue. We cannot victim blame 100%. We cannot victim blame. Oh them. my God. Can I please stop you there? Can I please stop you there? Oh, oh, oh. Please. And I really do respect you. This is my second time on here, right? So I have a special needs son. You might hear him in the background, might not. Um, it takes so much work to get little accomplishments. Well, big, but little accomplishments done. Mm-hmm. For the people who have the opportunity for that your mind works, um, like, come on, get do better. There's people out here who was born without the opportunity for their mind to work effectively. Right. Do better. Like, yeah. as, come on, we're adults. Do better. Do better. Put your phone down when you want to talk to your friend. I'll be, I'll be so quick. I was in nursing school so quick. I got to get off the phone. I got to get off the phone. I got to, just one more thing. No, no, I got to get off the phone. I have a test tomorrow. I got to get off the phone. That's it. That's all. They, they just want to. Like, grow up, just learn to sit by yourself, study, like, read something. I, I, <sighs> I, I feel your frustration, and I'm with you. I do believe that individuals have a responsibility to do their due diligence. I get it. But these platforms, these platforms have a level of responsibility. Yes, we know that these people should, before they hand off, Tens of thousands of dollars. And and, and thank you for calling in. I appreciate it. Before you hand someone tens of thousands of dollars, you should do some due diligence. The problem is we are well aware that many people go with the flow. If you have a platform that has a very strong influence over people, that's why they call themselves influencers. They have to realize if they're herding their sheep, towards slaughter, they've got a problem. You can't say, oh, well, the sheep should have turned around. They saw, like, you've already recognized that they're sheep. So at some point, the shepherd has to have some control of what's going on. But yeah, it's it's 50-50, maybe 60-40. But at the end of the day, these platforms, they, they have to do better. It's not about oh, this guy gave me $50,000, so let him on the show. It also has to be, are they going to give accurate information that's going to help my audience? Or bring them on the show, take the $50,000, and grill them in front of your audience and dress them down and keep the bag. That's what I would do. All right, here we go. Let me bring on Anderson. Anderson, you're live on the air with Pocket Watching with JT. What's going on? JT, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Go right ahead. Good evening, fellas. Uh, Man, it's crazy. For these past two, three years, uh, all the scammers have come out in the community. The hush puppies, the the, the Caesar Peenies. I mean, I've never seen so many scammers in a short period of time. It's it's crazy. And and going back to the EYL thing and holding them accountable and the responsibilities, 
Mm-hmm. You know, they say time and time again on their show, you know, do your due diligence. But mm-hmm. people who are new into finance and quote unquote into these games, like we take everything at face value. And that, and that has be, been me at many a times. Like I've listened to Eli so many times before in the past and a lot of information just went over my head. But we mm-hmm. think we take all these things at face value because like we see somebody in our community and we think that we can trust them not realizing that they run a game on us in the background. So so that was just my take on it. It's kind of crazy. And moreover, with this doctorate program, it's, I see that quite often. No offense to my Nigerians, but in the Nigerian community, um, every mofo out there is a doctor. Everybody um, a doctor. So it is what it is. But appreciate you guys. I appreciate JT. Thanks for being on air. Absolutely, man. Shout out to you. Thank you for coming up. And listen, I'm, I'm a fan of doing the disclaimer, right? Disclaimer, disclaimer. Do your own due diligence. Yeah, we got it. We got it. We got it. But you also have to know your audience, right? Before every WWE event or TV show when I was a kid, it told us, do not try this at home, right? If you were a WWE fan back in the day, they would say, do not try this at home kids don't do this to your little brother 20 seconds after the show starts someone's getting a ddt like it, it's how you have to understand who your audience is and saying hey do your own due diligence bop, 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 and then say man i really like facebook facebook is gonna go all oh, meta and like <laughs> you have to kind of measure what you're doing if you're reading the disclaimer like this, da 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 da, ba 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 da 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 da, ba da 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 da. Okay, let's start the show. And then when the show starts and say, "Bitcoin's going to the moon," it's gonna be crazy. Listen to me, I'm telling you, I've never been wrong. I'm the greatest investor in the world. That's not even. It's not even. Most people, surprise, surprise. They don't even come into the live stream in the first 30 seconds of the live stream. They get into the live stream like three or four or five and even 10 minutes into the live stream. So they didn't even see that part. The part that they do see is you beating your chest, claiming that you're the greatest investor in the history of the world who has never shown your portfolio to anybody. There's no evidence that you are the greatest or even one of the top 50 or top 100 are even the top 1,000 in this country at picking stocks. But that's the part they see. The beating of the chest, the arrogance, the, if I made you money, put a, put a, put something in the chat. If I made you money, that's the part they see. They don't pay attention to the disclaimer in the early part of the show. All right, let me bring up Chevy. We got Chevy in the building. What's going on? Can you hear me? Yes, go right in. All right. Well, first thing I want to give you your flowers. Uh, oh, man. You know, a lot of people don't like what you're doing, but you know, that's that's how you know you're doing something good because you know a lot of people are in a, a position where they don't have this type of money, and you know these people are playing on their you know on their fear. And back to what that uh, that young lady was saying about um, you know blaming the victim and stuff like that. You know, some people are they're in a spot where. They feel like they have nowhere to go, you know, and, you know, they, they're they trying to get rich or, you know, do better for their family. So, you know, but to a certain point, yeah, you know, you can kind of blame them. But, you know, because just like you say, you have to do your uh, due diligence if you're spending that type of money. Yeah. And then um, when you're speaking to that Mazda character, what I noticed is it doesn't allow you to reply or answer a question or uh, answer the question that they're asking. <laughs> you already know they're full of it. Like he wouldn't even give you. I'm going to hold you right there. I'm going to let you finish. I'm going to hold you right there because, listen, it's so funny. People in my audience, they're making comments like, JT, how did you have so much patience? Why did you let him talk so long? And then people from his audience was like, you didn't let him speak. You kept cutting him off. And the thing about that conversation is, is, is this. He would specifically ask me a question. I would answer He's not used to people answering. He's used to people nodding their heads and letting him just talk. He's like, you never heard of the Bill of Exchange Act, have you? And da-da-da. It's like, no, no, sir, I have. Like, you raise your hand. Yeah. (laughs) You was actually finishing it before he even, uh, I I forgot which was, uh, I think 18 something, and you finished it before he finished it. I know exactly what he was going to talk about because that is a commonly used 
uh, uh, law for people who uh, further the conspiracy theory of the uh, redemption movement. I know about it, but he's used to talking to people who do not know about it. That's why he kept like, let me build, brother, let me build. I cannot let you build on no foundation. When you start off talking about how banks are supposed to pay people who buy houses interest, when the law is actually saying, no, the bank has a responsibility to pay their investors, people who invest in the bond. And he doesn't know what a bond is. He has no idea what he's reading. And he thinks that the bank has to actually pay people who get a loan from the bank. I cannot let you build when there's no foundation. But no, please, please go ahead. Especially when you're talking about a different country. <laughs> in, the, in the UK. Yeah. In the UK. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He. I think he failed his civics class. Like, I don't think he understands that a law from 1666 or 1882 that was passed by parliament in the UK has no power or effect here. Like some people were even in the comments, not here, but on Instagram, they were like, well, JT, you don't know that a lot of US law is based on common law in, in Europe? I was like, yeah, but a person can say that the US constitution is based on the uh, Magna Carta, right? You can say that, but the Magna Carta has no power or effect in the US. You can just go directly to the US constitution. You don't then reference the Magna Carta and be like, well, the Magna Carta says so-and-so and so-and-so. And so, and so. so in the U.S., you have to do, once again, these are people who barely graduated high school, <laughs> who couldn't finish a book report. But because they watched a few conspiracy theory uh, videos, now they have something that they think makes them smart. Like, oh, the knowledge I have is better than the degrees you have. Ultimately, and listen, I'm going to get a lot of flack off of this, but I'll take it because I don't care. I don't know you people. You haters out there, you trolls. I, I, I don't care. I'm going to catch some flack for this. But normally, in my experience, street dudes long, and I mean long, for the approval of squares when it comes to intellectual prowess. They, they listen. I've been in so many situations where clients have come to my office smelling like weed, looking like they've been on the corner for a long time, and they <laughs> will try to use words to impress me. They will try to intellectualize the way, like they'll do all of that. And I'm looking at you like, bro, like, come on, man. You know, I know more than you. You know, I know you don't know what you're talking about, but you are longing for my approval. Not one day have I ever longed for the approval of a street dude. That's the problem. They want to be uh, seen as equals intellectually, and they will do anything they can to try to prove that the street knowledge that they have means that they really have like a street MBA. Nah, man. You, <laughs> don't. you, you don't. I'm sorry. You don't. Now, this, I know a couple of, you know, they, they, but you know, it's it's back and forth. But you know, it, yeah. it's not cool to be a nerd. It's not cool to be knowledgeable. Uh, you know, you know, if you ever see me, I'm you know dreads, you know, dark skin. But you know, sometimes when I speak, when I used to talk to females back in the day, they're like, "You sound like you're white." But how do you sound? How do you sound white? It's a color. But it's you know because the jobs that they have, you know, I always had to speak, you know, with a proper, you know, right. So when they hear you, me talking, you pronounce like, the whole word. That's what yeah. makes you white. You pronounce the whole word. Yeah, yeah. That's the problem. That's the problem. All right, Chevy man. I appreciate. It. I'm. I, I. I wish I could have you on longer, man. But I, I got so many people, and I want to get to bed at some reasonable time. So let me bring up the next caller. We got caller R H S. You're live on the air. What's going on? Going once. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Go right ahead. All right. My, uh, as far as my audio, everything cool? Yeah, you good. You good. Go right uh, ahead. Hey, look, check this out, right? So I don't really know much about these guys besides, uh, I guess, the Breakfast Club interview and everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, at, at one point, it's not like the Breakfast Club gave them the subscribers or gave they probably gave them some type of exposure, but they had to get to that limit to be exposed by the Breakfast Club. So I'm wondering at what point or is there any point the platform that they established themselves on 
Do do they hold any responsibility or what? Now, I, I mean, I personally believe they have a lot of responsibility. Some of these guys, they'll tell you they pay money to get on some platform. They were not like on the radar. Like, oh man, this guy was on my radar. I saw he was doing all this great work. So I brought him on the show. It was like, no, they reached out to someone who knows somebody and said, listen, I got a bag. I'd love to come on the show. I'll pay you $50,000. Can I get on the show? And then they get on the show, right? That So it's, it's, it's a symbiotic relationship. Like, to try to try to make a, a bigger point is this: a lot of you guys out here, you don't know the money behind these platforms. You think because a platform has a million subscribers that they're making so much money. That's not necessarily true. Right. right. And even if they do make a lot of money in your mind, like fifty thousand dollars a month or a hundred thousand dollars a month, some of these platforms have a huge team around them. Right. Like Earn Your Leisure built up a huge team. Now, if you've been noticing lately, their team isn't as big as it used to be. Right. right. The team used to be much bigger. Some of the people who are on that platform, who had shows on that platform, they now have shows on their own YouTube channels and they don't do shows on their platform anymore. In my mind, I'm thinking the money's drying up and they can't split the money up with everybody. But these 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 platforms have big infrastructures that they created and they need that extra revenue in my mind. They need that extra revenue from podcast payola. They need someone to come in and pay 20,000, 50,000, $30,000 to come on the show because the ad revenue by itself is not enough. The ad right. revenue is not enough to pay for all of this stuff because they assume their growth during the pandemic was going to continue to go up, right? They just thought it was going to double, then triple, then quadruple, and it's going to keep going up. So right. in anticipation of that growth, they got a team. They bought a studio. They did all of these things, and now the numbers went down. And now that the numbers are going down and they have all of this uh, overhead with a studio and a team and cameraman and stuff like that, Podcast payola is probably on the rise because they need the money more. Right, right, right. So you mentioned EYL. I have to admit, in the beginning, I, I was tuned into them. But I, I think right when they, if you notice the clothes, the the background, when, when that started changing, that's basically uh -huh. when I lost my interest in them. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. But I appreciate your input and your thought on that. I and mean, you have a good one. All right. You too, my brother. You too. And, and, you know, you're not the first person to say that. Like, they, they saw a change in character. The arrogance has gone up. Like, I remember watching early episodes of EYL. You know, they'd sit there at the table, the mic, you know, the head kind of, you know, kind of down. And, you know, now all of a sudden they're wearing silk pajamas out in public. Now all of a sudden, it's about the drip, you know? Check my drip. Look at what I got on. Look at my car. What happened to the, you know, the two guys sitting at the desk interviewing some sort of financial expert? That's that's bingo. It's check the drip. We're the biggest to ever do it. I was always taught by my father that money does not change people. Money enhances what that person was before. That's what money does. Money all of a sudden now shows you who they really wanted to be, but they did not have the ability to finance who they wanted to be. So they were faking humility. But when money comes in, you say, oh, that person changed. Now they didn't change. That's who they were before. They just didn't, they did not have the money to be able to do it. All right. Okay. Let me go through here. Let me get all of these people in here. All right. So next. We have, we got SK. I'm going to try to get through everybody. Oh, and you know what? I, I'm going to let someone skip the line because this person is a YouTuber and I've seen one of their videos on this topic. We have the Crypto Ponzi in the building. So let me bring this fella up because I've seen him and he covered this story. So give me one second to set this up. Here we go. Boom. Good on you, mate. Hey, what's going on, man? Yeah, awesome, man. I just I couldn't believe it. I, I saw your um, YouTube short, 
Mm-hmm. And then I thought, um, and I was just about, I just finished streaming myself. And then all of a sudden I see the title of this and I thought, this is right up my alley. So I don't even know the topic, <laughs> but brilliant, mate. You've done a good can, job here. Can you please introduce yourself to the audience and what you do on YouTube? Oh, thank you very much. Well, Danny DeHeck, AKA the Crypto Ponzi Scheme Avenger. I um, name and shame anyone that's running or promoting a Ponzi scheme or a scam. And I've been doing it for about two years and I'm, too old for this game, <laughs> but um, but no, that's basically me in a nutshell, really. But I've been fully involved in all these platforms like Hyperverse, um, Hyperfun, Hypercapital, uh, Viddy Look, anything to do with Ponzi schemes on a platform. I've got a database, and I've just um, and it's just so awesome. I don't know how you guys feel about Bitcoin Rodney being locked up. Oh no, no, we're happy. We're we're happy over here. I'm I, I'm excited about it. And, and here's the issue. I've done videos about platforms like, uh, what is it, Novatech. I'm sure you're probably aware of Novatech. I've done videos on uh, GS Partners and even interviewed one of the promoters of Did GS Partners. Yeah, Did they yeah. try suing you? Did they try suing you? Huh? Did they try suing you? No, and that's funny. They tried to sue the smaller YouTubers who yeah, had they... like a fraction of my yeah. following. My video has the way outperformed any of the videos that they did, but they didn't try suing me. So I, they, I don't they know what it should, is. Um, I, I love getting cease and desist letters over here, but they yeah, didn't try I know. Me. They, they tried getting a blog removed off my website, and they I got told they spent $40,000 in, a, in a, a court doing so, and, my, and they went after my ISP. Mm. And they I, I got my blog blocked, so they won. And I said, why didn't you just ask me to remove the blog? But I every time somebody goes after them, uh, um, you know, it, it's just amazing. Yeah, and, and the uh, thing with GS Partners is I had one of the promoters of GS Partners on the show, and this was uh, a few months ago, before the cease and desist. And I tried yeah. to explain, because it was a younger guy. The guy's younger. He's, like, probably in his 20s. And I tried to explain to him. I said, listen, I'm an actual financial advisor. What GS Partners is doing, they are selling unregistered securities. Yeah. It is illegal. Yeah. At some point, the state governments or the federal government is going to issue cease and desist and they're going to shut the company down. Now, he nodded his head like he knew what I was saying was true. And he you know, thanked me for my information. But he continued to you know, promote the company. And then the uh, regulators from the state of Texas sent me an email. They saw the show Ooh. and they yeah. asked me a couple of questions about GS Partners. And about a month after I was contacted by the state of Texas, that's when the cease and desist orders came. So th- these platforms wow. are are really a plague in the black community. And I tell yes. you this for this reason, multi-level marketing for whatever reason is big in the black community. And when crypto started to cross over with multi-level marketing, we see all these, these guys. So can you explain to the audience what ultimately happens to these platforms? Because they'll get the the link that talk about how much money they can make. They can make five percent a day, ten percent a day, twenty percent a week, or something like that. And these and they pay out for a while. Then all of a sudden they go away. Can you explain what actually happens to these companies? Yeah, well, the the, the real big deal is is actually nothing to do with the platform, whether it's feasible or viable, or whatever that word is. But it's actually the the commission money they play the people. Pay, they um, I've been streaming for eight hours, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's the commission money that they mm. pay the people that promote it as the scam. Mm. So the recruiters are the ones that are making all the money, and often they are the ones that are getting paid the money in real time. So everyone's been sold a dream, and then they're told that this is going to happen, the metaverse, you know, we, we're going to launch all this here, and this is the hope, this is the dream they're selling. But the reality is, like at the moment, there's one called Boomerang, and they're doing arbitrage trading. And oh they're God. telling people to pay $10,000 to buy a license. But right. the person that pushed them into it is getting $1,000 straight away. Yeah. 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 And I, I think I, I remember the guy, I think it was like Holton Bugs or something like that. It isn't like Holton Bugs, the guy who promotes that. Oh, there's many of them. Chavez, the guy that meant to own the company, hasn't uh, even got a last name. Yeah. And, and we have tracked, we've got crypto geniuses working with us. 
Mm. We've tracked that the money that they're paying to prop this Ponzi scheme up is actually coming from Hyper Fund. Mm. And th th there's four main organizations that seem to be um, changing money around in crypto, and we've followed it. And we've mm -hmm. found out that, you know, all these people are working out of the, most of the Ponzi schemes I've been busting have come in out of the same building in Dubai. And the money tree mm -hmm. is actually all the same. And they, they're shifting money around to keep these platforms going long enough. So it's taken three months for, for these guys to launch their boomerang service. Mm -hmm. And now they've got something they feel was a product. They're now mm -hmm. telling people to recruit, recruit, recruit. And that's how Hyperverse and Bitcoin Rodney it's all about the recruitment and their teams and it's just multi-level marketing, you know, and they, you know, like I've got Keith Williams. He's a guy that now lives in a 3 million pound house. Uh, I've been, you know, they're living in this, he's got stage four cancer, this guy. Mm -hmm. He would have brought in, I reckon it's a $4 billion scam hyperverse myself. Mm -hmm. And they reckon that in one year it brought in 1.3 billion. I can't even comprehend the money. And it's been going for two and a half years, so it's easy going to be a four billion dollar scam. And they haven't, you know, and they just rinse and repeat. I mean, let's just say, hyper tech group, hyper capital, mm -hmm. uh, hyper fund, hyper, hyper cash, they had a bunch of stuff. Well, hyper nation, mm -hmm. uh, hyper uh, cosmos, and now diversal, and then and then they have a break off, and then they start up, you know, Vidi look, stable Deo, Vidi look two and then ven three ven four and now what they've got to is they're telling people they can start their own ponzi scheme and any money that comes in the door they give six percent to the person that owns the ponzi scheme four percent mm -hmm. to the tech provider and then out of that they start offering people eight percent uh return on their investments and paid back at one percent per day and all this sort of you know it's just yeah it, 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 how much shit do you want to listen to you know what i mean yeah, I mean the numbers never add up. But listen, man, thank you so much for coming up and, and awesome, sharing man. that with us. I Thanks for pushing me in. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. All right, all right, guys. Back to the callers, back to the callers. But yeah, I think Boomerang was a Holt is a Holton Bugs thing that he also promotes. He was involved in that uh investigation that Coffee Zilla did. So yeah, just be careful. If they're promising you a ridiculous return, it's most likely a scam. All right, back to these callers. We have Rob. Rob, let me bring you up to the show. Rob, you're live on air. What's going on? Uh, JT, how's it going? Uh, it's good. It's good. Thanks for coming on. Uh, first and foremost, I want to say uh, really appreciate what you're doing. Uh, from the beginning, I, I've been uh, a pocket watcher and uh, always glad to see another Howard man um, <laughs> do, do, doing something good. I uh, like how you've uh, utilized uh th this platform and built this platform uh, to also grow your practice so mm -hmm. i love to see it uh oh, thank you, man. Thank I, you. I want you know and the re i i stumbled across it during the pandemic because uh I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a real estate finance attorney over mm -hmm. on the east coast and uh during the pandemic we got you know they, they sent us home everyone's working from home i right. spend a lot more time on social media and uh I I start seeing friends, you know, that I went to high school with and um, getting sucked into the MLMs. Right. And uh, particularly the, the Forex MLMs. Mm -hmm. And uh, at first, I was offended when they would reach out to me because <laughs> I'm like, oh, you think I'm stupid. Right. Like, you think I would join such a thing? <laughs> I'm like you, so I, and then I realized like these guys are, they're, they're, you know, they're just lacking. And, um, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I also, I feel bad for them. Um, and so I used to be, I used to be walking around the house screaming, like telling my wife, like, this is, this is an outrage. Like they're, they're milking these people. And for mm -hmm. some people don't know, a lot of individuals made the most money they've ever made during the pandemic sitting at home collecting unemployment checks. Yep. Um, and it was an opportunity for a lot of people mm -hmm. um, and an opportunity um, that unfortunately, uh, I mean, interest rates were the lowest they'd ever been. Yep. Uh, yet people, you know, a lot of people had their money stolen from them. And that's the way I view it. I, mm -hmm. I'll never blame a, 
you know, an ignorant victim. We have regulators in place. And, and I used to scream, like, where are the regulators? Where are the regulators? And why they're is too it? They're small. They're way exactly. too small. Exactly. And they're way too weak. They don't have the teeth. The FTC at best can smack you on the wrist. They yep. need the DOJ to be able to come in. It's pathetic. It, it, exactly. And um, I, I used to wonder why is it that you turn on television and they're talking about a bunch of nonsense, particularly the news, mm -hmm. and they're talking about a bunch of nonsense that really doesn't matter. They're not talking about any real, they're not talking about the actual issues that are imp impacting people on a daily basis. Uh, mm -hmm. but, and especially not covering things that impact our community. Um, and it seemed as if no one was covering this. Um, and I first stumbled across this uh, young man, out of, I think out of Canada, Marco, and he was covering the MLMs. Always and Marco, that, me too. I yeah, was and yep, that, yep. I, I, I like that young man, and uh, yeah. I, I was sad to see how they were attacking him. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I was still in private practice, um, and he was in the United States, frankly, right. I, I would have done my best to to, to, to offer my assistance. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm I'm in house now, man. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but 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 yeah. Uh, so I'm glad to see that there there are individuals like you whose platform has grown. Um, and to kind of offer a, a bit more balance and shed some light um, on, you know, a, a serious issue. And, yeah. and, I, and, and I always I tell people all the time, uh, particularly when I saw these individuals, you know, I, I lost friends over that MLM, Forex MLM nonsense yeah. um, because I tried to convince them and like they were getting upset with me. Mm -hmm. Like, all oh, right, you don't get it. You don't believe in me. And I'm like, no, I'm just saying you're you're getting you're getting robbed, and um, I I, I want to reach out to them, but they like they I know they feel dumb now, um, but I, I they used to spend so much time doing this. I'm like, imagine if these individuals spent that much time mm -hmm. towards something useful. Um, and that's it. You know, I know you got a lot of callers. I just want to say again, thanks. Um, keep doing what you're doing, and um. If uh, our, our advisor keeps keeps you know screwing up or some small things, we'll, we'll be reaching out. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up, man. Thanks, Rob. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Now, and and I, I experienced the same thing when I Markets Live first popped up. Um, I had some people who I went to high school with join it, and they were screenshotting and posting the pictures of the trades they were making and about all the money they were making. And they hit me up and like, hey, JT, you need to get in on this. And just like Rob, I was personally offended. I'm like, like, I went to school for this. You think you're going to teach me about how I can make money in the foreign exchange market? I, I went to school for this. And I think I ruffled some feathers and ended some, well, they're not real relationships. If I haven't talked to you since 2002 when we was in high school, I'm not really hurting our relationship. but. I probably upset some people because I I grill people in real life the same way you see me grill people on this show. My personality is the same. That's why I try to tell you guys, you wouldn't like me in real life because the same way that the same treatment that Mansa got last week is what you would get if you would try to have me join your multi-level marketing company. I would act the same. I would give you the same questions. I would have the same tone. All of this. This is the same person that I am in real life. So, yeah, I, I'm sure there's people who I went to high school with who joined a bunch of MLMs and they invited me and I pissed them off because it's like trying to pull someone out of a cult. They, they don't care about logic and reasoning. And I told someone this the other day. The reason why you cannot logic and reason someone out of a financial scam is because they did not logic and reason their way in. They weren't being logical when someone told them that they can 100x their money or they can earn 5% a week. That's not logical. That's emotional. And if you're trying to logically pull someone out, it most likely won't work because they did not logically go in. All right, let me bring up some people. I've got uh, Dre. Dre is in the building. You are live on the air with Pocket Watching with JT. What's going on? Why, go on, brother. How you doing today? I'm doing good, man. Thanks for calling in. You already, man. Hey, man, 
real talk, I'm gonna just keep it short and simple. Like I think the universe really just had me stumble upon you because Monsa, Christopher, whatever, man, he had caught me in the loop mostly because I was in a state of desperation because I'm a family man. Uh -huh. And I just been doing physical labor work since I was 16. That's all I really knew. I stopped pursuing school. So mm -hmm. real talk, this whole new year was like, ah, I'm, I'm going to get on it. I'm listening to man's. And then, you know, you just basically just shut him down, proved him so wrong. And I was like, damn. In a way, you just shut me up real quick, too, because I'm over here trying to practice and preach to my friends, too, because I'm thinking we finna be up. But <laughs> Like I say, man, I stumbled upon you by, I don't think it's on accident. It was a purpose for it. So I appreciate you and what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And if you got any tips on how to become an uh, upcoming financial advisor, you know what I mean? Like, At, Listen, absolutely. And listen, I've got an entire channel. And Dre, thank you for uh, coming up. I appreciate it. The fact that I did a little petty show with Manta last week and it connected to you in a way where you know, you realize the stuff that he was saying was BS. That's huge for me. That's huge for me. Because I I don't go in thinking that I'm going to save people. I think most people are probably going to be pissed off. I say it because I feel like it needs to be said. But it, to reference the question about, you know, an up and coming financial advisor, I have an entire separate channel called uh, Black Financial Planners, Pocket Watches, Black Financial Planners, where I interview some of the top Black CFPs in the country. We talk about how they got started, how they were able to study for the exams, graduate from college, get licensed, all of that stuff. I do it on another channel called Pocket Watchers, Black Financial Planners. Go check that out. I'm trying to schedule some more interviews with some more Black CFPs, but trust me, there's more than enough content that's already on that channel that will get you, you know, up to date on the basics of how you go from zero to being a qualified, certified financial advisor. So go check out that channel. All right, let me bring up to the stage. We got Dwayne. Dwayne, you're live on the air with Pocket Watching with JT. What's going on? Hey, what's going on, JT? It's one of your fellow um, Black certified financial planners talking, you know. <laughs> what's going on, man? What's going on, bro? Thanks no, for calling no, no, in. No, man, love your show, man. Love what you do. You got more patience than I do to deal with these people. I tell you, way more. But I just have a question. One thing I, that, that I just don't came out of my mind to understand, mm -hmm. you know, being in the business, why do our community fall in love with multi-level that business model? Oh, you know that, that that business. I even know mm -hmm. certain financials. I'm not gonna say no name because people might be involved. Involved, and you know, it start with you know certain letters but anyway I I'm not, yeah, yeah. yeah i'm not gonna put it on me but i know yeah. certain final that they, they do a the mlos thing it's mm -hmm. not a good it's like a business it's a model. terrible business model yeah it's, and it's then, a terrible business exactly model. And it's then, a failed business model yes and then you mentioned the part about the cult it's almost like when you get in these places it's almost like a church mm -hmm. like they gotta get you to get you to motivate you to get you to Get you to give your money and and then you're gonna get and they always got this elaborate far out story that guy was on the side of the road and he 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 he, he got the he got into the thing and next thing you know he's riding in the yacht these elaborate stories all i want to say is if yeah. you want to build wealth and it's going to take planning and you're going to have to be your own i tell my clients you got to be your own financial advisor mm -hmm. And what I mean by that, not necessarily in the practice, but you right. have to be be willing to make the decisions that are sound, especially particularly yeah. now when we had the um, back in the um, 2000, when everybody was on. I knew that wasn't going to last because the period that we're coming in with high interest rates, you're going to have to earn your keep. These <laughs> fake gurus, because you're going to have to be, you know, as well, I know the market's changed. You're going to, you're going to have to look at evaluations now. You're going to have to look for right. value It's not going to be cheap money going into Dead these, these yes. unicorn companies that never turned a profit, but the, uh, the evaluation just keep going up and up and up because that's what you got to put the money somewhere. So they put it there. Yeah. You're actually going to have to do some analysis or you can do what I say. Just put it in an index fund. Dollar cost average and go to work. Like stop, stop trying to beat the market because most of you cannot beat the market. Yeah, even with that, most people I think before they didn't get to the market, they do work on um 
work on the um, cash management issues before oh, you yeah. start, start. You need start. the budget. Yeah, yep. you, you need to yeah. have a, this you need the cash budget money. first. Yeah, get an emergency savings fund, pay down consumer debt, then you can invest. Yeah, I think I, I think those those are type things that the people start should start listening to, listen to. But we got to get rid of them. Um, ML the market multi level marketing is just never for, do it. You never, it, listen, I hate to think down. Down. I, you don't I think actually have up? always Marco on on my channel uh, a few months ago, and I'm going to be on his channel at some point when we can link up. Mm -hmm. But you know, the question came up like, what can we do to stop these multi level marketing companies? Unless the federal government just completely shuts it down and just say that it oh, is illegal, hard. you will never get it uh, get it removed because multi level marketing is tied to hopes and dreams and aspirations they're going to a person and telling them listen you don't need to know anything about business you don't need to know anything about that product or the service that we have mm -hmm. all you have to do is tell two friends and get those yeah. two friends yeah. to you tell two friends, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you will be rich like me there's no way that any logical argument can beat selling that hope That's that true. hope is better than any dope that i know because you got a person who's like, what? I tell two friends to tell two friends and they'll tell two friends and I'm sitting back at a beach and I'm making hundreds of thousands. You can't beat that. So as far as getting rid of it, if you think you're going to get rid of it, you, that you're, you're fighting a losing battle. Now, if you can try to educate people as much as possible and the fact about the internet that I love so much, the internet leaves a record. Like mm -hmm. back in the day, in the 90s or something, mm -hmm. if somebody was in Amway and then they went away and then they popped back up in Herbal Life, you didn't know. Right. right? You ain't know. But now, just like I did with this character today, uh, Bitcoin Rodney, I can show you his track record. Right. I can show you all the multi-level marketing companies he's been a part of, which ultimately turned out to be scams. We can see the history. So if we can educate people to say, hey, if anyone brings a multi-level marketing opportunity, right, opportunity to you, see what other opportunities they were in in the past and see how that worked out for them. And if they still can't understand it's a losing battle, trust me, some people just got to take the lick. Like some people got to touch the hot stove to know that it's hot and it burns their hands. Others can watch people do it and know not to do it. I'm one of those cats that I'll watch you make a mistake. And learn. Right. I don't have to make the mistake myself. So yeah, it, it'll be a losing battle thinking that we can just get, just get rid of it. We, we can't. It's always going to be there. We just try to educate as many people as we can. Let's be. I got a couple more calls, and I'm gonna wrap this thing up. I don't want this to be longer than an hour and a half. So let me bring up who I can. I've got someone who's been here for a while. SK, SK, you're live on the air. What's going on? Hey, what's up, JT? How you doing? I'm doing good. Thanks for calling in. Good, good. So, have you seen that documentary Bitcoin on Netflix? I don't think I've seen that one yet. I don't think I've seen that one yet. It it recently just came out. I, I okay. want to say like maybe like a week ago. Yeah. But my thing about that is I'm not trying to justify anything Bitcoin Rodney has done. This is mm -hmm. my first time hearing of him, but mm -hmm. it infuriates me because the difference between him and the white boy Ray Trapani, um, mm -hmm. who was the ringleader of the scamming, which I, I, def I desperately want you to watch this. this All right, I'm, I'm going to check it out this weekend. I'm going to check Please. it out this weekend. Yeah, because the only difference is, is Rodney is black and he's white. Like this dude, mm. it, it's the craziest thing to me. He, on paper, he's saying he made 32 million, right? Mm -hmm. But of course he's saying he has way more than that. He was facing 175 years in prison. And mm -hmm. he got off with with Tom Sir. I'm telling you it. Unfortunately, I don't want to tell, spoil it for you right. and whoever's gonna watch it. But it's my point is he did mm -hmm. way more than what Bitcoin Rodney did. If Rodney did eight million, you know what I'm saying this did this dude did 32 and counting, and he's very arrogant. He's telling the story because he got mm -hmm. off and he brought in two business partners, um, mm -hmm. and he rat he ratted on them to the feds when they were shaking them down. Right. Of course. Of course. They, they always rat. They, they always rat. They <laughs> always rat. And the crazy thing is he was the mastermind behind it and they could prove all that. But yet because he went and ratted, they let him off with time served. So, you know, again, I'm not co-signing what this dude did, but it's just so right. crazy. It, it's like what Finesse Two Tom said. It's cool when they do it. It's a problem when <laughs> I do it. Like, 
For real. So when the black people get a hold of it, y'all going to put us under the jail. They're going to try to make him an example. But mm -hmm. when you watch this documentary, your mind is going to be blown at what these boys was out here doing and uh -huh. what they got. Away. One one got one year. The other one got eight years. But this mm -hmm. dude that was the ringleader got no time. Like yeah. they had fake websites. They was they was acting like they was going to put together a, um, a card where you could spend all your Bitcoin from yes. one card it was ridiculous and they was falsifying who their ceo was putting fake pictures of people lying saying they went to harvard doing whatever you saying rodney did they did it Tom. they did it too <laughs> 50 million and a slap on the wrist and he's still yeah. out here saying in the end like i'm not stopping like he, yeah. he now he's the money that he was able to keep Right, he's mm -hmm. now loaning it to people at a fifty percent interest. So it's, it reminds me of the tender swindler, the tender swindler. Like you know, what I'm saying mm -hmm. whatever that dude was mm -hmm. when they caught him and they didn't, they didn't prosecute him. So he just still out here doing what he was doing. And I just hate that for us. Nobody mm -hmm. should be scamming to begin with. But when the black people do it, they are gonna put you under the jail. Yeah, I mean, and it's and, and thank you for calling in. I appreciate it. It's it's historic. Same crime different race normally we get the harder sentence it is what it is i don't like it i want the sentence to be the same across the board if you commit the same crime but you know what can help you avoid that trap not commit a crime if you don't commit a crime you don't you, you, you're not in that situation now there's other things like a black guy and a white guy they perform the same job for the same company and the white guy makes more mo money yeah you're in that situation but trust me I'd rather be fighting that battle of trying to get equal pay for equal experience and talent at a job than fighting and say, well, the white guy who committed that crime only got five years. Why am I getting 20? I don't want no parts of that battle. Give me the other one. I want that one, not the one down there. All right, a couple more callers. We're going to wrap this thing up. I've got... Now, you guys, with we got. I think Chris... Chris... And there's some other le letters behind it, but you know who I'm talking about. Chris, you're live on the air. What's going on? Uh, hey, JT. Uh, this is Christopher Ely. Do you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Go right ahead. Okay, yeah. So um, I, I teach uh, political science at Calibor California State University, Fullerton. Um, mm -hmm. I was listening to what you were saying about the multi-level marketing people. It was explained to me by one of the economics professors here that mm -hmm. it's hard to get those people because as long as they're selling you a tangible product or a service, um, right? Yeah. 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 Providing you a service, whether you succeed or fell out at that is your own, you know, whatever yeah. you put into it. Right. So that's what well, they, they do. They it. do draw a line though. Right. They draw yeah, a yeah. line. And the line is if the incentive of yeah. the independent contractor if the company sets it up where the incentive is bringing in people right. to be uh, independent contractors, recruiting people to come in and sell, if that brings in more money or if that is the ultimate incentive and the product or the service never really goes out to an end user who's not also in the scheme, oh, okay. that too can be shut down as a pyramid scheme. So a classic pyramid scheme is just money for money, money transfer. Right. You give me a hundred dollars, then you get someone else to give you a hundred out. You know, that's the classic pyramid scheme, but a multi-level marketing company can get hit up on charges of being a, a, a pyramid scheme. If you can show that the incentive and the bulk of the money is just a money transfer of more recruiters coming in and the product of the service is never really going out to an end user who's not wrapped up in it. Okay, that makes perfect sense. I like he I teach political science, so I've got mm. that's not like my bag, but I that's what he explained it to me. Because I get students mm -hmm. all the time who made it into California State University, Dominguez Hills. It's not the most prestigious uh school, Dominguez Hills, Fullerton, all the Cal states that I teach for, mm -hmm. but the you gotta have at least the 3.5 GPA to get into them. Mm -hmm. Um, and they fall for these schemes, you know, yeah. and, um, like with, uh, Umar and Boyce Watkins, these, these people have PhDs like I do, and they're weaponizing their PhDs to right. tell students, you don't need a PhD. It makes no sense at all. 
when you mm. really sit back and think about it critically. But mm. I had I remember um, Boyce Watkins came to um, a school out here one year, and he and he was telling students uh, not to that if you buy, he was selling some kind of like wealth product or something, <laughs> and you don't need your your college degree. Get this wealth product <laughs> that I'm selling in place of it. And it's just as good as a college degree. And um, we I think the school banned him from, from coming back there to, to give a to give those kind of lectures. I don't really think he was vetted that well. Right. But he's not the only one. It's like I like to me, like if you got a master's degree like yourself, master's degree, PhD like myself, and you and you um are telling young minds that that degree means nothing and buy this bull crap that I'm telling you. Right. That, that's a, that's problematic. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's very problematic. Yeah. You, you have some people who got a degree in a subject matter that to them, they realize now it's worthless. Right. right. So there's some, there's some validity to that argument because someone went out, they got an underwater basket weaving degree. Mm -hmm. They <laughs> They owe thirty or forty thousand dollars, and now they're on this this crusade to say college is a scam. Yeah. Well, well, brother or sister, you got a degree in underwater basket weaving. You took a, a, a course of study that was probably extremely easy or yeah. extremely popular, but ultimately you never asked yourself the question: What type of money will I make in the work field with this education? It yeah. wasn't until you walked across the stage, you got your degree, you went to start applying at jobs, and you realize I cannot do, I can't do anything with this. Right? right? Yeah. So, well, even, so there's that, like there's a, that side of it too. Yeah, even if you get like an underwater basket weaving degree or something like that, you can still go to like Enterprise Rental, right? You can still yeah management program or Target or something like that. You know, but it's. Remember this though. I, I'm not sure how old you are. You you look around I'm, I'm, my I'm age about range. Your age 42, yeah, that's what I figured. 44. Remember, we graduated into the recession. Yeah, that's true. So traditionally, yeah, they could have went to enterprise or they could have went and worked for an insurance company, and mm -hmm. you know, they, they but that they were competing against people with real degrees. Hell, right. they were competing against people with secondary degrees, mm -hmm. master's degrees and law degrees, there were people lined up around the block applying for jobs. So that compounded the uselessness of their degree because they're trying to compete. Like if they were just competing against someone who went to high school, yeah, underwater basket weaving, it doesn't matter. We do a lot of on the job training here. So, hey, you got a degree. We really don't care what it is. It means that you're willing to learn. Yeah. And you, you can work hard. Okay, come in. But when you got the, the, the guy with the JD, the PhD, and the master's degree lining up against you, or just a bachelor's degree in a relevant subject, they were working at a uh, a coffee shop now because right. their degree didn't mean anything. But yeah, Boyce isn't in that situation. Boyce, <laughs> to me, Boyce is an opportunist. He's right. an opportunist to me. I, I, I see his rally for the culture and I just love black people so much. Yeah, yeah I got that, bro. It's it's but, easy to weaponize culture too, especially yeah. in academic academic circles, right? Because you already feel like this level of guilt that you got into college, especially if you come from an underprivileged neighborhood. Right. So then you get a guy like Boyce Watkins and these other hotep dudes come in and they're just like just add into the adding fuel to the fire, you know. Yeah. It justifies ignorance. Yeah. When you have a person who is well educated, they go to a community of people who aren't traditionally well educated and to th tell them you don't have to get the education that I got. I've got this thing on my digital shelf. Yeah. A fraction <laughs> of the cost. Right. Buy that and that's even better. Knowing yeah. that when you graduate from the Boyce Watkins Black Business School, you can't put that on a resume. <laughs> like, 
like you, you're not coming to any Fortune 500 company and say, hey, and I, I would like to note that I'm a recent graduate of the Boyce Washington <laughs> School of Business. They look at you like... like how how long does it take you to connect these paper trails? Because I heard you what you were saying to that previous caller about mm. like you it's easy to look up paper trails because mm. I'm a researcher myself and uh-huh. that stuff I, like you, the the fact that you even do that is like commendable because yeah. I don't know if I got the time or patience to do that for you know it, it grows out of my actual profession. So right. you know, as people know, my clients get hit up for investment opportunities all the time right and sometimes a lot of times people don't like to say no i love saying no oh i love saying no i love to see the light in a person's eye dim when i tell them no because people are so entitled and they think anything that they ask for they should get and i just love saying no 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 yeah and uh i tell my clients i'll be a huckleberry like anytime (laughs) somebody wants money from you, uh, a family member, especially like my, my my higher net worth clients or whatever, but any client, I tell them, listen, if you're in a situation where a family member or someone close to you, a friend, they're asking you for money and you feel uncomfortable telling them no, tell them that, hey, I want to say yes, but you got to call JT. You got to call my financial advisor first. Just give him a call and hit him up with the opportunity. Tell him. And if he right. says, okay, I'm with it. I always tell them to say that. So I have so much experience long before I ever popped up on YouTube. I have so much experience researching these things to be able to justify telling my client why we're saying no. But also, man, I love to argue. I'm just, yeah, I'm, just yeah. dude, I'm that guy. I love, like when people say, man, you got so much patience. No, I just love art. Like I can argue all day long. It, it like I will never leave. Like you'll never see me say, "Oh man, I'm gonna leave. I'm getting off of here. I'm tired of this. I don't get tired, boss. I ain't yeah, never yeah. tired, boss. I will talk you down for forever. I'm a middle child. For those of you who are unaware, <laughs> us little kid, we have to get a little loud to get noticed. The babies always get noticed because they're the babies. The older ones, they get to do what they want because they're older. When you're that classic middle child, boy, you better be ready and prepared to create some good arguments and argue your point to get what you want because that's the life. But yeah, that that's right. why the research that I do on YouTube is just an extension of the research that I do for clients when they bring me a investing opportunity and they ask me, hey, JT, check this out. See what this is like. And all I did was start doing it on YouTube. That's it. Right, cool. So, it re- I mean, research is a very, like, important thing, you know, yeah. and I always tell that to, to my students as well. It's like you, when they say I've done my own research, I'm like, okay, so what's your independent variable? What's your <laughs> dependent variable? What's your hypothesis? What what research like, huh? have you, yeah, you know, it's like, come on, yo. But anyway, thanks for taking my call, man. I, I appreciate this channel. It's always That's entertaining. Cool. My wife isn't here, but she, she loves what you do as well, so. Hey, Christopher, thank you so much, man. I appreciate you coming on. Listen, people, I'm almost nearing about two hours. I don't want to go this long. I got stuff I got to do. I know we got people back there on call. Listen, we got to do this another day. We got to do this another day. I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you guys who support the content. Thank you so much. Let me give a big shout out to any of you guys who super chatted me. And let me tell you something, and I say this every show moving forward. I try to say this. This is a finance-related show. I do shows where you can just call in and ask me your questions about your personal finance situation. I try to give you a recommendation on what you need to do. Do not super chat me if you have credit card debt. Do not super chat me if you're living paycheck to paycheck. I'm good, right? I'm good. I'm not a full-time YouTuber who needs super chats to survive. Like, I'm not going to make my my mortgage payment because you guys ain't super chatting me enough. We don't do that over here. I'm not e-begging. Now, if you want to super chat because you want to highlight and you want to support the show, great. But you better have some disposable income to do it. All right? And if you do have money problems, if you do live paycheck to paycheck, I have free resources. Go to my website, pocketwatcher.net. I have a free course that you can take that will teach you how to budget that will teach you how to pay off your debt, 
teach you how to save your uh, up for your emergency savings fund. I have a free personal finance quiz where you plug in your information, very basic info, how much money you make, what are your expenses, and it will generate a report that shows you what your budget should be based on industry standards, how much money you should have in an emergency savings fund based on in industry standards. All of these resources are free. So check that out. Go to pocketwatcher.net. But let me give a shout out to everyone who did have, hopefully, disposable income and you wanted to support the content. We got Vanessa. Thank you so much. Says, hey, JT, love your content. Just passing through. Thank you, Vanessa. We got hard lessons in the building. DR, Dominican Republic. Thank you so much. We have Bam. Bam's in the building. Says, wow, I want to... Uh, I want to nominate this guy for the <laughs> Scam Hall of Fame, JT. I know that he got away with almost $8 million money into his bank account. Like this isn't money that he funneled up to the bigger way. This is money that was in his bank accounts, according to the IRS that was in his court documents. Says, uh, JT, you should put something together for these uh, scam legends and we'll all vote. Maybe I'll do something like that. Now, listen, tax season is upon us. So you're going to get probably less content from the pocket watcher during tax season. This happens every year. Don't worry. I'll pop back up and do more shows after tax season. But it is usually lesser during tax season. Just to give you guys a heads up. But I'll try to put something together like that. Uh, it says, JT, uh, your boss, YouTube, runs fake. Uh, 47. <laughs> My boss. YouTube is not my boss. We're partners. I'm in the partner program. Not my boss. We're partners. But uh, says JT, your boss YouTube runs fake uh, 40, uh, 40, 6,400 month uh, free money IRS scam ads. Please get your boss YouTube next. Listen, I might just, I've seen a lot of stupid um, ads ran on YouTube. I am a pocket watcher. You know what I do? I report those ads, right? So that's something people need to do. If you see a scammy ad or some bad content that you think is harmful on YouTube, report it. Just click the button. There's three dots. You click the three dots, you report. Type in there why you are reporting the video. If you think the ad is scammy or whatnot, type it in there, all right? Uh, who else do we got here? We got... Uh, JS Prezi, I think, says Eli, uh, common sense. So, Eli, from what happens to common sense, a friend of the show, uh, greatest crypto person you know. Yes, he, he absolutely is the greatest crypto person I know. Says, uh, I was all the way up 2021 because of him. All coins he shared said would, uh, popped way before they did. Listen, I am not, uh, I'm not bullish on crypto. I'm not a fan of crypto. I don't see the utility in the majority of crypto. I don't see the utility. I think most of it is a fad. But when it comes to analyzing this stuff, having a measured perspective on it, Eli, from what happened to Common Sense, is the best. Is the best, bar none, that I know. Period. But once again... You should not be investing in crypto if you do not have a budget, if you not have an emergency savings fund, if you have a lot of debt, if you're not already investing in traditional asset classes. Then if you want to allocate three to five percent of your overall portfolio in crypto, go right ahead. At that point, you're measured. At that point, you're well diversified. But if you're going all in, and for you, all in may be $3,000, maybe $20,000. I don't know. But if you're going all in on crypto and you don't have a budget, you don't have an emergency savings fund, you have high consumer debt, and you're not already investing in traditional asset classes, you're probably going to lose. You're probably going to lose. But yeah, shouts out to uh, Eli. Y'all need to subscribe to Eli from what happened to Common Sense. He knows what he's doing. Oh, then we got <laughs> our friend of the show who was up here earlier, the Crypto Ponzi Scheme Avenger. Shouts out to you. Thank you so much. Uh, we got uh, Black Investments Matter. 
uh, a Juma network. Shouts out to you. Thank you. Says, if I had a dollar for every time a street dude tried to quiz me. Yes. I said this early in the show, man. It is what it is. In my personal experience, street dudes are always seeking my approval or my acknowledgement of their intelligence. They all, I mean, that it's almost embarrassing. I'm, I'm going to be real. Let me, let me tell y'all, listen, you don't have to fake it for me. It's cool. Just come to me as you are. Normally, like, listen, I'm, I'm the financial advisor. You're coming to me because you have a question. Stop trying to impress me with all the buzzwords that you learned online. Just sit down across the desk or virtually, if it's a virtual appointment, and ask me the question that you have. Don't give me this whole preamble of how you know about the Forex and you're trying to diversify your... Po- just, just ask me the question and I'm going to do the best I can to give you an answer. Stop seeking validation from me. I'm not seeking validation from you. Like just, you know, it is what it is. But yeah, street street dudes are always trying to prove to me how smart they are. Always. It's like, come on, man. Give it up. Uh, <laughs> We got KK Zay. She was on. She says, uh, not to silk pajamas in public. I'm crying. Yeah, man. Listen. You can always tell when a person goes left, when their outfits become ridiculous, right? When that, when their outfits become extravagant, like like weird, like you know they're going left. When you go out in the public wearing silk personalized pajamas in public, it's a problem. It's a problem. Uh, shouts out to D Harrison. Thank you so much. A new member over here at Pocket Watching with JT. Uh, what's this? Uh, Victory here saying, finally caught my petty twin live. Oh, listen, listen. If, if, if we're twins, that means you are very, very, very petty. Very petty. Says, I've been here since the start. Oh, day one Pocket Watcher. I've been here since the start and I love your growth. I'm uh, going to come on soon yeah hey listen we always drop the link we drop the link come on up if you got something to say come on up i'm here for it uh b yeah bpk says jt uh can you please talk about breakfast club wouldn't yeah wouldn't i heart want to be uh cautious and not damage their name with all these scammers you would think that you would think that, but I think the DJ MV sees a Pena thing has them thinking because they took that video down rather quick, like really quick. I mean, I've done videos about people who've been on the Breakfast Club in the past. Those videos are still up, but this video was down after I did a 60 second YouTube short. The video was down. So that I think they're more aware now than they've been in the past. I mean, Tony Robinson, Tony the Closer Robinson has been on them. Eli from What Happened to Common Sense has been on them with this whole uh, DJ Envy thing. So I think iHeart is really aware that there's something wrong with all of these so all these scammers coming on their platform. So yeah, man, it's, to me, it's podcast payola. Somebody's getting money because it doesn't make sense any other way in my mind. Uh, Dre, long-time supporter over here. Dre says, uh, that's why I can't support student loan relief. You were smart smart enough to get into the school, but too dumb to calculate the loan interest rate between community college transfers versus uh, day one uni. So here's the issue. I witnessed with my own eyes people who started out with very strong and robust majors, right? They were going to study accounting, or they were going to study like these, 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 these STEM like uh, these STEM majors. But then after a semester, they was like, "Uh, I'm gonna switch it up. I'm gonna switch it up." So to me, it's because you got a lot of people who were they were smart enough to get into college, but I think because of the way that the classroom is set up where the teacher isn't babying you and you're not being challenged, your parents aren't there to push you. Some people went the path of least resistance 
and they started studying things and a major that was easier, but usually easier majors are the things that aren't as competitive in the marketplace. And then because they switched majors two or three times, they were at school for five or six years. So their debt stacked up higher than usual. There's a lot of things, but yeah, I'm, I, I don't support it for people who just made bad life choices because they're acting like victims. You're not a victim. You made bad choices in life and now you're dealing with the consequence. You're not, you're not a victim. All right. Last one of the night. We got Aaron G says legends of scam. I love that idea. Happy new year and keep keeping these suckers in check. Yeah. Legends of scams. We'll, we'll do something like that. Have like a tournament or something like that. or put them into the legend of scams hall of fame or something like that. We'll do something like that. So listen, guys, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Obviously, I'm doing a show today, Thursday. I normally do them on Friday. So I'm not going to be here tomorrow. You're not going to see me until next week. So until then, I'm going to leave you guys with Mo Money Hi, Tax. I'm Mike Evans with Mo Money. Tell me, what do you know about Mo Money? Brother, all I know is I was there last night getting my taxes done. And today, there's Mo Money all the way. You know what I'm saying? And how about you? In here yesterday, back today to get my check. Mo money stuff is real. I'm mo money for life. I the slow money. Well, come to mo money, cause we about that. Mo money taxes, and once again, it's on. And I got the hookup. <laughs> mo money taxes. Come down and see us, and you'll be glad that you did. At Mo Money Taxes, you're more than just another number. This year, we're offering our 30-second refunds to go along with our next day refunds. Come down and see us, and you'll be glad that you did. Continuing saga of Mo Money Taxes. Norfolk police are investigating the tax preparer, and they have alerted the IRS about customers' complaints. Where's my check? That's the question all of these people want answered. The IRS is basically verifying to us that their, our money is here in their bank account. Friday, crowds gathered at Mo Money Taxes in Norfolk. On Granby Street, owner Mario Brady told us he printed 50 checks and 30 did not clear. The banks have refused to cash their checks saying that there is fake. I mean, that is unacceptable. Federal agents raided the headquarters of Mo Money Taxes in Tennessee this morning. You may remember, tell on your side, I traveled to Memphis for local Mo Money customers who claimed they didn't receive their refund. We continue to follow another developing story. New tonight, tensions continue to run high as customers wait for their tax returns that they say were not getting from Mo Money taxes. You can see the level of anger just a few hours ago at this Norfolk location off Brambleton. Angry customers who say they were promised refund checks and didn't get them broke windows and police were called to break up the angry crowd. That's just ridiculous. Marcus Eves, a former customer who says he filed his taxes with Mo Money in 2007, is worried about what we recently uncovered behind this Mo Money Tax Services location on Elvis Presley. This is wrong for, you know, files to be out here. This is people's personal information that anybody could have come by and gotten. Investigators are now looking into the discovery of thousands of documents thrown into three dumpsters behind the facility. Shortly after authorities arrived on scene and put up crime scene tape, so did Marky Granberry with Mo Money Taxes. Normally, uh, we would have all files shredded uh, and, and uh, shredded or whatever, but this we don't throw files in the garbage can. I asked him what happened and why the documents were not shredded. Our lease was up on this operation, so I assume the landlord went inside of the location and for whatever reason he decided to throw the files in a dumpster. Hey, Pocket Watchers, are you looking for real financial advice? Thornton Advisor Group is here to help. Jason Thornton, Certified Financial Planner, specializes in tax and wealth planning. Are you living paycheck to paycheck with no retirement plan? Do you need help with the IRS? Book your consultation with Thornton Advisor Group to get a financial plan. Budgeting, savings, debt management, tax planning, investing, and retirement, even IRS debt settlements. Stop trying to run the play. Get the advice you need to live your best life from a certified financial planner. Book your consultation appointment today. Go to www.thortonadvisor.com.